Here. Ms. Weber? Here. Mr. Gatelli? Here. Dr. Pascucci? Here. Mr. Santana? Here. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. One, so the first uh, item on the agenda is a, uh, a proclamation. Um, I'm going to start it and then I'm going to hand it off to the uh, Deputy Mayor. So resolution commemorating the centennial of the ratification of the 19th Amendment, whereas the year 2020 marks the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment of the United States Constitution, and whereas women fought for the right to vote for more than a century and preserved in the face of resistance, and whereas many New Jersey women advocated for the right to vote, and whereas Monmouth County was home to many suffragists, both male and female, and suffrage rallies and events occurred within Monmouth County's borders, and whereas February 9th, 2020, will mark the centennial of the New Jersey ratification of the 19th Amendment, and whereas August 26, 2020, will mark the nationwide centennial of the 19th Amendment officially becoming part of the United States Constitution after the required number of states had ratified and whereas daughters granddaughters and great granddaughters of the women who fought so hard to vote have been making their voices heard at the polls for nearly 100 years and whereas women are running for office and currently in elected office in large numbers in Monmouth County following the footsteps of these great suffragists and whereas there are currently over 200,000 women registered to vote in Monmouth County New Jersey and whereas all government entities on the local, state, and national level should commemorate and recognize this historic milestone and reaffirm its commitment to empowering and uplifting the voices of women. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and the Township Committee of the Township of Homedale, County of Mama, State of New Jersey, do hereby celebrate and recognize the 100th anniversary of the passage and ratification of the 19th Amendment, the United States Constitution providing for women's suffrage and honor the role of the ratification of the 19th Amendment in promoting the core values of our democracy as set forth in the Constitution of the United States and reaffirm our desire to continue strengthening democratic participation and to inspire future generations to cherish and preserve the historic precedent established by the 19th Amendment. Thank you. So the committee will go in the front real quick, please, for the... Uh, item on the agenda approval of minutes from the January 2nd, 2020 organization. Do you have a motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Mr. Gatelli? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mr. Santana? Yes. Ms. Weber? Yes. Mayor Bontempo? Yes. Minutes have been approved. So the next item is uh, new that we incorporated um, for the start of 2020. So. We're going to take public comments on agenda items only. So if any of the public has comments on any of the items on the agenda that tonight are listed as 2020-65 through 2020-80. Uh, please state your name in the record. Kathy Weber, 
Carol, Bom Carol Bomber, five by the straw, home bill. Um, there's a res um, the consent agenda is a mosquito spray, I believe. Yes. Do we have the dates for that? And they will be spraying? You could go, go through all your questions and then okay. and then we'll right now on the consent agenda it's just the mosquito spraying. Okay. I was wondering about the dates and the components. Okay. Uh, so through you, Mayor, the county provides us with a notice when they're going to spray. It'll be a wide range. They haven't given that to us yet. Once we receive it, it will be posted on our website, on the Facebook page, um, for the public to know, but it will always be a wide range. I think last year it was something from like June 1st to July 30th or something like that. They can't give us an exact date in our township, but there is a phone number. So if you have concerns or questions, you can call them directly. Okay, so we don't have a, a lead time as far as notification is concerned? We haven't received anything specifically on the dates yet. And we don't know what the components of the spray are? I, th th I can give you what was in the spray last year. I don't, there's a lot of, um, you know, technical terms, but I, I can send you the, uh, the okay. posting from last year. We just don't have this one yet. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else from the public on any items on the consent agenda? Seeing not a closed portion of the consent agenda, the motion to approve items uh, 2020, 65 to 2080. Move. For the second. Second. Roll call. Mr. Catelli? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mr. Santana? Yes. Ms. Weber? Yes. Mayor Bontempo? Yes. Uh, next, Dante. Next is a resolution directing a referral of a letter from the Mom's County Prosecutor's Office to the local finance board. Do I have a motion? Mayor, I'd like to make a statement before we move that motion, that resolution. Sure. As many residents recall, on October 28, 2011, Hurricane Irene hit New Jersey. The hurricane's rainfall, which should have been routed safely through the storm sewers, instead inflicted devastating flood damage on my family's home here in Homedale. The cause of this flooding was due to the Homedale Township's admitted failure to clean and maintain the storm sewers as confirmed by our township engineer. By neg neglecting the stormwater management obligation imposed by the Clean Water Act, our home suffered extensive flood damage from a clogged storm drain. Instead of handling over 100,000 gallons of storm water that it was designed for, the failed system dumped devastating amounts of water, mud, garbage, and other pollutants into our home and surrounding property. A conservative cost to clean up the repair and repair the damage was under $79,000. I immediately notified Homedale Township of the damage on the date it occurred as a private citizen by email and again in person on September 1st 2011. Regular Township Committee meeting. My wife and I followed up with a letter to the Township on September 12, 2011 with a summary of the issue. On September 21st, I presented the Township Claims Adjuster with written evidence from our neighbors confirming that Homedale was made aware of the damage, the drainage problem, well before Hurricane Irene. We also filled the required tort claim notice upon the township on, September, on November 22nd, 2011, with proof of the damage suffered in support of this claim. In the interest of resolving the claim without the need for litigation, on January 6th, 2012, my wife and I, still private citizens at that time, made an offer to Homedale Township to settle the claim for a payment of only half the cost of the damages we suffered. The amount was roughly equal to the emergency cleanup costs of $37,950 billed by Danatom Development back in September of 2011. In early 2012, the township admitted that it was at fault and agreed to settle the claim with us. In March of 2012, the claims adjuster for the township's insurance carrier offered $30,000. I spoke with the mayor and advised that we would accept the settlement offer from the carrier if the township agreed to pay the difference requested in our settlement demand. The township agreed to this request 
but only on the condition that we agree to be patient for the payment due to budgeting purposes. While no time frame was given, it was our understanding that the payment would be made sooner rather than later. Accordingly, and in my sincere desire to be a good citizen, by, <clears throat> by making a good faith decision to work with the township and its budgeting process, we sent a letter to Homedell Township to withdraw our tort claim notice and consider the dispute settled when we learned that the township had agreed to make the final payment. In April of 2012, we did in fact receive a payment of $30,000 from the insurance carrier. Thereafter, my wife and I patiently awaited payment on the remaining amount due. In response to subsequent requests by the mayor for an invoice with the remaining amount of the settlement agreed to during our earlier discussions, in October, I emailed him a statement from my company that performed the cleanup, Danatom Development, for $9,872.50. I was assured the payment would be forthcoming as agreed upon once the statement was received. As every resident at the time was aware, the township began dealing with massive devastation and power outages inflicted by yet another storm, Hurricane Sandy, on October 29, 2012. Although I was not an elected official at the time, the township's sole focus was to recover from this disaster. This process took several months, consumed countless hours of the mayor and the committee. My issue, rightly, took a back seat. Due to my own experience suffering through a significant flood loss just one year prior, my sole focus upon taking office on January 2nd, 2013, was spearheading and organizing the township's charity event for the residents of Keensburg. With countless hours put in by myself, as well as many volunteers, the event was an overwhelming success that raised over $100,000 for the victims suffering from the effects of Hurricane Sandy. All of the then members of the township committee, including Mayor Botempo, knew firsthand of my commitment of time and energy to that worthy cause. Unbeknownst to me, payment to my company was included among the 130 other bills payable on the consent agenda for a township meeting held on February 5th, 2013. At that time, it's worth noting that the township was operating without the benefit and guidance of a township administrator. Andy Katz, who had resigned shortly before I took office. Being brand new to public office and in only my third committee meeting, I relied upon and expected the township attorney to advise on matters of legal compliance and procedure. Advisement concerning committee meetings, both as to my obligation, voting on consent agenda matters, as well as when I should recuse myself based on actual or appearance of a conflict. Without such advisement, I regrettably voted in favor of the items included on that consent agenda. Had I been made aware of this being an issue, I now know that the procedure is as simply as asking for the one item to be pulled, and then I would have abstained from voting. Now, an astonishing seven years later, and despite all of this information being available at all times to each committee member, one or more elected officials saw it fit to notify the Monmouth County Prosecutor of my vote on February 2013 in an obvious pursuit of some sort of political vendetta. What a surprise here at home, though. Given that my settlement was negotiated and resolved long before I ever became a public servant, it defies logic that I would ever risk jeopardizing the payment owed to us. However, since the payment was also approved by a unanimous vote of three other committee members at that time, an oversight in following procedure on my part amounted to no more than a harmless error. I express immense gratitude to the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office for conducting a very extensive investigation of this issue. The final determination confirmed what I and everyone else knew all along. I am innocent and there was no criminal wrongdoing by anyone. I also thank the township committee members serving in 2011, such as Deputy Mayor Serena DeMasso and Mayor Pat and Prevedudo, who quickly responded after the disaster with a commitment to ensure that my wife and I would be justly compensated for the damages we suffered. 
I welcome the referral of the matter to the local finance board and look forward to being exonerated on any intentional wrongdoing doing once again. Until then, I will continue to focus my time throughout the remainder of my term representing the residents of Homedale Township that elected me, as they have done for over seven years. Thank you. Move. 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 So, so before roll call. So um, last week the township received a letter from the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office. The first paragraph of the letter directed me as mayor to confer with the township committee and the township attorney to determine if steps must be taken under the township's code of ethics. Based on my review of the letter, feedback received from my non-recused colleagues, it became abundantly clear that this matter needed to be promptly forwarded to the township's ethics board, which is the purpose of this resolution this evening. Roll call, please. Mr. Gatali. For FDLB be recused, committee one. Fine. <laughs> Dr. Pascucci. Yes. Mr. Santana. Yes. Ms. Weber. Yes. Mayor Bontempo. Yes. I'd just like to also address uh, one additional resolution. Uh, the committee met in executive session to discuss this matter. Um, like any matter, legal advice, legal discussions occur in executive session. Any actions that are a consequence of those are discussed in public session, uh, which is what the last resolution was. And the other resolution uh, that the committee has requested to be considered tonight would be a, a resolution invoking investigatory powers of the township committee and authorizing the issuance of a subpoena to the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office for documents relevant to its correspondence. Do I have a motion? Move. <coughs> Second. Roll call. Mr. Gatelli? Recuse. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mr. Tan Santana? Yes. Ms. Weber? Yes. Mayor Bontempo? Yes. And just to reiterate, um, any legal advice, legal review of documents would occur in executive session, uh, but actions are obviously taken in public session. So um, that may well be, the, um, for, the, for purposes of this resolution, there won't be any further comment at this point. Mike, can you explain to me exactly what you've done? I wasn't listening intently. What was that resolution? Certainly, committeeman. Um, the, the resolution um, that the committee requested um, it will authorize is the governing body's use of its investigatory powers under state law in order to issue a subpoena to request uh, documents that the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office uh, has in its possession relevant to the correspondence that they provided to the Township Committee. Regarding my issue? Regarding the issues that are outlined in the letter that they had sent. <coughs> so I had all that here and if any of the committee members who were taking me up on my offer Friday to meet, we could have gone through all that prior to tonight. But just for the record, no one wanted to meet me personally on any time before the meeting. Thank you. So the next uh, introduction of ordinance is Wendy. Introduction of ordinance 2020-02 is an ordinance establishing attendance policy for appointed officials of the Township of Homedale. Motion to adopt on first reading, publish in the Asbury Park Press, and set public hearing for Tuesday, February 11th, 2020. Do you have a motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Mr. Catelli? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mr. Santana? Yes. Ms. Weber? Yes. Mayor Bontemps? Yes. The next ordinance for introduction is Ordinance 2020-03. It's an ordinance establishing the Traffic and Bike Safety Committee. Move. Second. Roll call. Mr. Cotelli? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mr. Santana? Yes. Ms. Weber? Yes. Mayor Bontempo? Yes. The next uh, ordinance to be introduced tonight is Ordinance 2020-04. It's an ordinance establishing the Finance Advisory Committee. Motion to adopt on first reading, publish in the Asbury Park Press, and set public hearing for Tuesday, February 11th, 2020. Motion. Move. Second. Roll call. Mr. Catelli? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mr. Santana? Yes. Ms. Weber? Yes. Mayor Bontempo? Yes. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, hearing on ordinances, um, 2020-01.
Ordinance 2020-01 is an ordinance directing video recording and live streaming of public meetings of the Homedale Township Committee. This ordinance was published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the bulletin board in Town Hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and at the table at the rear of the room. Any public comment on this ordinance, 2020-01? Seeing none, close public portion of a motion. Move. Second. Roll call. Mr. Gritali? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mr. Santana? Yes. Ms. Weber? Yes. Mayor Bontempo? Yes. Anything else I added? So, okay. So, uh, the department's um, administrator, any updates? Uh, the only update I see there are many members of our fire department here and I have received some emails in, since our last meeting so I just want to let everyone know that we are continuing to work and investigate all possible options for a firehouse. Um, we have been working with the township engineer and the township architect. I expect we're gathering some documents and some information. I expect to have that. Um, I will be sending some information to the township committee next week and I really hope to have a public presentation at the February 11th meeting outlining recommendations and looking and doing a full analysis. I also welcome any members of the public who might have ideas or suggestions to please email me so that we can do a, an investigation on all ideas. We're trying to think of everything but more heads are better and, um, and we can have that all in our presentation and that would be it. Thank you. Um, engineer, Ken? Okay. Uh, no report uh, today, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Chief Financial Officer Bill? No additional comments tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, attorney? Sure, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the only item I'll mention in my report is that based upon uh, the discussion in executive session, the committee requested a resolution be added to the agenda. Uh, the resolution will be a resolution awarding a professional services contract to Potter and Dixon to provide legal services as special counsel public utilities upon terms acceptable to the township attorney, subject to the certification of funds by the chief financial officer in an amount not to exceed $50,000. Do I have a motion? Yeah. Have a motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Mr. Catali? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mr. Santana? Yes. Ms. Weber? Yes. Mayor Bontempo? Yes. Anything else? Ah, uh, that's all I got. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, boards and committees, I'll uh, start with the um, Deputy Mayor. Uh, just to note, we had a um, brief planning board meeting and appointed the uh, engineer, uh, TNM, as a planning board engineer with um, conflict engineers of CME and Mazer. Thank you. Um, Committeeman Grutelli, any updates from the report? Uh, Committeeman Santana. No report, but I would welcome the public to apply to the local finance uh, advisory committee. Um, and we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> and that to be on the website, correct? Yeah, that's going to be on the website. Through you, Mayor, uh, as soon as the ordinance passes at the next meeting, we will have a tab under boards and commissions that's currently on the website. We'll have a tab for those two new committees, and there will be an application form there. Thank you. Uh, Give me Ms. Gucci. A uh, couple things. Uh, tomorrow night we're installing two new police officers, uh, a new canine officer and a new detective. I apologize I don't have the names because uh, after I left my phone upstairs with the data on it because of our exciting uh, confidential meeting that we had. So if the administrator knows their names, I wish he would read them. If she doesn't, it's okay. She'll pull it up. Well, while she's pulling it up, number two, um, I welcome the date fire comes back on the agenda. I made my recommendation, two years, open every meeting, nothing hidden. I will not make any more comments until it gets on the agenda, then I have plenty to say. I will, of course, listen to anyone's opinion, but my comments will be reserved until it comes on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. You have the names? I, I know we're promoting uh, John Martin the sergeant, yes. second yes. class detective. detective. Yeah. The hell they think they don't the names, Murph is the dog. Murph is the dog. <laughs> 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 Murph. Uh, do we have anything else? No worries. Okay. Yeah, 
I apologize, so, it's on my phone. So while the ministry is pulling that up. We will um, open up for public comment. Uh, members of the public are provided uh, welcome to comment up to three minutes in duration. Please state your name and address for the record, and then you can go through whatever um, comments or questions you have. When you're done, you can return to your seat, and we will, uh, either I will or one of the members on the um, governing body or professionals will look to respond to any of the questions um, uh, possible for tonight. So, uh, open to public, any public comment? Carol? Carol Bomber, uh, Five Douglas Drive, Homedale. Um, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you for hiring the new attorney to deal with, I presume, New Jersey natural gas litigation. Is that correct? Yes. Go, go, go through, yeah. I'm sorry? You're on timer, so just keep, go, go through your question. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, second of all, I'm, I'm concerned about the waivers that they're supposed to were granted in, in April, if that leaves us in a litigious disadvantage as far as our position is concerned with New Jersey Natural Gas. Can anybody address that? You just keep going. You, you, you. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Ms. Balmer, we aren't able to comment on active litigation, so I can't provide you any form of response to your question, but we appreciate your comment. Okay, thank you. Anybody else in the public? Yes. Brian McGraw, um, president of the fire department this year. Uh, a few things we've discussed. Did you your address? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. Five Oak Crest Court. Okay, thank you. Um, we're concerned that the firehouse is moving backwards. Nothing's being done, nothing being spoken about. Uh, we feel like in the last six to eight months that the firehouse was a political move and we're not thrilled about how it happened. Um, secondly, we've been talked about an incentive program. We're not anywhere with that. And thirdly, the way things are going, we feel that the town talked about getting a new tower ladder. We don't feel that's going to happen now with the way things are not happening in this firehouse. Thank you. Want to comment on the truck, Sean? As I've said, Forgive me, I'm new, I've been here two months. We have a brand new engineer. Um, there were several options that were presented to us in terms of the location, in terms of the incentive program. I think, I think I've think i met with the fire department several times. I'm open to any comments and activities. We are actively working on it. And as I mentioned earlier this evening, we do intend to have a presentation on where we stand on the February 11th meeting. And I, in the last meeting, we confirmed that the truck is ordered, right? We have the truck. I believe he was referring to a second truck that will be in the near okay. future, which is all part. We're, we're looking at um, capital investments that the township will need to make in the fire department moving forward in the near future, as well as the potential uh, building of a new firehouse, which the township committee has budgeted for, as well as uh, any other ways that we can assist the fire department in recruiting membership and. and that might include the incentive program that they have proposed to the township committee. All of that will also have to be considered in um, in light of the township committee budget. But it, may I interject, or yeah. I said I wasn't going to talk, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> it is true then, 99%, it will be on the next agenda, so the fire department and public can come. I'm going to press you. I have every intention of it being on the next agenda. I'm just waiting for some technical information from our professionals. They have committed to getting it to me by the end of this week. From that point, we will. I will send the information I have to the Township Committee, and as long as the TC is, uh, the mayor wants it, it will be on the agenda. As soon as we, guys, as soon as we can get it on the agenda, we, we will. I know that there's been a lot of work by Sharon since she came on by our professionals to, this is a top priority. And when you're spending this much money, you just wanna make sure we do it right. So I, I guess I would apologize for, if you believe it's a delay, but it's not an intentional delay. We're really trying to do the, the right thing for the town, the residents, and for the fire men and women who dedicate so much of their time that we value to get this thing right. So we're, we're looking for input, we really are. Right, we, we get emails periodically from people with their thoughts on the process. That's fine. We're, we are feeding that to our professionals, and professionals are, are looking at, I believe, multiple options to try to find the best one. And you'll get the presentation, 
whoever wants to be at the next meeting, if it's on the, if hopefully it's on the next meeting, just like we will, and we'll be able to answer, ask questions and get the questions and kind of get around to where we're going with this with this process. So, hang tight, we, we are, we're getting very close. So please, again, I sound like Ron Emma with the truck. <laughs> it should be on the next agenda. We should try our best. And again, I'm happy to meet with and speak with any members of the fire department whenever you'd like. I have already. Um, we are actively working on it. It's just, it takes a little bit. We have a lot of new people in, in the mix here. And I know many of you have been here for a number of years, including Committeeman Pascucci, um, and working on this. But unfortunately, we do have a new set of people, a uh, group of people that are working on it. And so we have to look at everything. Mr. Mayor, can I add something to that? Uh, as one of those new people, I just want to reassure uh, everyone here that serves us in the fire department that this is absolutely a top priority, but that's why I'm asking for your patience so that we can get it right. We're absolutely committed to following through on this, but we want to do things in a, in a perhaps a different way than they've been done in, in the township lately. We want them thorough. We want them vetted and we want our professionals to present to us all the options so that we are making an informed decision on your behalf. And I would like to just probably thank you guys for all the work and, and time you put in yeah. to this and, and supporting because our safe. residents, keeping everybody safe. It, it, it is nothing that doesn't go unnoticed. It is important to us and we appreciate, we appreciate you taking the time to come out tonight to show your support and your dedication to making sure this project uh, moves forward and, and you do have our commitment uh, from the Township Committee that we are prioritizing this and we are going to get it done. Do you have another question? Come on, I'm sorry. Mr. Mayor, I'm Jeff Lowe, I'm the fire department was wondering, will Dave the RCB appointed the liaison to us again with the town uh, and the other request is can we have some better communication with the town I know Sharon you've been, you've been good Dr. Pascucci you've been fantastic over the years we're just hoping to get some better communication as well through you yes Dave DRC is the I believe the official title is fire training officer I believe um, he doesn't need to be reappointed each year but but he is all, still on board um, and he is our, our the key point of contact administratively for the township. However, any one of you is welcome to come. My door is always open and speak with me directly. Um, and any other suggestions on, on what you'd like to see or how you'd like to improve communication, I'm, I'm more than willing to listen and hear that out. Thank you. And Sean Thank you. is top notch, guys. Okay. Top notch. Yeah. Uh, anybody else in the public? Scott Goldstein, 24 East Long Drive. Uh, since we're on public safety, uh, I raised this question last meeting. I was looking for a better update status as far as where we are with the radio purchase, the installation, uh, the issues involved in getting this up and running because not only does this affect the fire department, but it affects the first aid squad and the hazmat crew and everybody else in town. And it was one of the issues they pointed to about response time. And in my understanding, town had already appropriated millions of dollars to purchase a new radio, so I just want to know where we are in the whole process. I think everybody would like to know that. Sure. Um, we have purchased the equipment. We've replaced all of the um, mobiles, except the mobiles in the Public Works Department. They have to wait until we're much closer to switching over because of the system that they're currently on and how they will be able to uh, communicate. Um, everything has been ordered and delivered except for some additional radios that the first aid has requested, which we are in the process of confirming and ordering. Um, and we're working on getting all of the code plugs together. Uh, we've hit several obstacles along the way. Um, we've had an issue with space that's township owned property that was leased up to a third party and we have to um, re renegotiate that lease which which we should be signing off on very shortly we had an issue with the fiber and getting it where it needed to get so there have been several obstacles but we are continuing to move on this we had a meeting last week 
on this project to make sure that we were moving along. Um, we're hoping to have a cutover date and, up, and be fully up and functioning in the next couple of months. Okay. So, so do you have a project plan? I don't, I mean, there, there are several aspects to the plan. I don't know if you're looking for something specific. Well, again, this, I'm just, you know, um, personally tired of having to ask this question month after month. So, I mean, we've heard about fiber issues. When, um, when, when will that be complete? Matter, Scott. When, when will the fiber installation to the radio tower be complete? Through you, Mayor, again, all I can say is our plan is by April to have the system up and going. We are in the process of overcoming all of the other obstacles, and the project is continually moving. We, have, You have an initial plan, you start with that plan, and when the obstacles, obstacles come up, you need to develop plans around that. So that's what we've been continuing to do. Like I said, we're very far along in the process, and we're moving as fast as we can. And, and I think that's tremendous. I really appreciate the effort. I'd like more transparency so that we know that that progress is continuing to be made because when it comes to April, uh, if there's a problem, we have to know about it prior to the April meeting. Otherwise, it will come and all of a sudden, well, it's going to take another few months. So basically, transparency about what the issues are, so we're kept informed. You got it. Thank you. You got some public. Kim. Kim Ligan Pistola, 939 Holmes Road. Um, I'm a little mixed up now because when I heard the dollar amount that's going to go for fighting New Jersey natural gas with a new firm of $50,000, which is a spit in a bucket. Um, I'll back up, but that's really not very much considering um, what needs to get done and in a short time, if it's even doable at this point. Um, not to be redundant, back in 2016, the application came through, it was denied. I was then filed as an intervener. I was an intervener. New Jersey Natural Gas pulled their application. I was insured, assured by Mr. Collins at a township committee meeting in October of 2017 that the township's intent was to stand firm and aggressively pursue when asked if that would be done. We were told yes. I sent letters to the township committee in 2017 following that meeting. Again in January of 2018, asking what we were done, I never heard anything. Um, New Jersey Natural Gas came back with their application again. Uh, we went through the zoning board. Again, it was denied. It came through as a whole separate application. We were never allowed to ask questions about their previous application. We were told it was two separate entities. However, they applied to merge the two uh, dockets. So everything that they had previously was allowed to be used, everything we had was not. Again, I was at a committee meeting in September. I asked what was going on with the natural gas because of a concern about an alleged school going in across the street from me. And I specifically asked you, Mr. Collins, are we fighting this? And you said, yes, we are. No one at that time said there was outside counsel hired, and there was an opportunity to say that. Come to the meeting in December, we suddenly find out, four nights before the meeting, New Jersey Natural Gas is going to get approved. The alleged outside counsel that was hired back in April, I don't know how much was spent or what they do, must have told the committee to roll over. They were going to give them every blessed variance and everything else that they asked for. That council back in April of 2019 said they had no witnesses. They weren't pursuing anything because I now get all the mail again because I am deemed an interested party, although I lost my intervener status. I know where 50,000 goes and it goes nowhere. I had trouble with this town back in 1997, and it is because of me there is a Right to Farm Act in the state of New Jersey that held in the appellate division. 50,000 is a spit in the bucket, and it's a last ditch effort to go nowhere. Because if everybody's reading what's coming through, we're done and we're doomed. So I hope this town continues to fight this, and I hope you can allocate some more money because and again, this is not disparaging our road department. I'm not disparaging their salaries. I'm not disparaging anything about that. 
but the amount of money that has been spent lately in the road department is ludicrous on equipment. And perhaps we can use maybe an outside someone to go over some of the things needed. I buy equipment all the time from my farm. I have a lot of the very same equipment. I have over 50 trucks on the road, 32 dump trucks. I buy snow plows. I outfit them. Your time, your time is up. Okay, because you don't want to hear about the $300,000 spent at the road department in the last two months. Uh, through the mayor, uh, just a couple of notes regarding the comment. Uh, the first is that the dollar amount that was set was not to exceed for purposes of the resolution adopted tonight. Uh, the $50,000 threshold is the same threshold that was used when we previously appointed special counsel for uh, public utilities such as this. And the committee, excuse me, uh, thank you for your comment earlier. Um, the, uh, the committee certainly has the ability and understands that it uh, may in its discretion need to increase that amount in the future uh, but in order to be fiscally responsible the committee does choose to set not to exceed amounts on its contracts in order to ensure that professional services contracts are um, administered properly with respect to the litigation um, over the course of the litigation the township has continually been a um, an intervener defendant in this litigation um, so the township has been a party as of right. A municipality has the ability to enter these lawsuits uh, when they are filed with the BPU. The township originally did so in 2017 when the first uh, petition was denied at the zoning board and New Jersey Natural went to the BPU. And again, we, uh, the township did the same when the second petition was filed. So the township has always been um, on the other side of the V in opposition to the New Jersey natural gas applications um, and all the actions, um, including the one tonight, are consistent with that. Thank you. Yeah, and, and another thing on the New Jersey natural gas, I should have said it with my updates, that we have a public hearing um, on the 13th at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. next door at the community senior center. At the community center. I will send out notifications to the public via the, the township, but it, 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 as I said in the last meeting, it, it, it speaks volumes when we have a, a strong turnout from the residents who are who are coming out in opposition to this project. So I would encourage everyone to please you know, reach out to your friends and neighbors who are also concerned about this and ask them to come out. If they want to speak, they can speak. If they don't want to speak, they don't have to speak. Everyone has an option to speak in front of the judge. And the judge, as we did in 2017, will stay there as long as he has to for everybody to have the chance to speak about this project. All right, next. Can I, can I say something? Um, I just want to say uh, two things. One, this is an initial authorization for legal expenses. Um, we intend to take this issue on full steam ahead. But we are trying to be um, mindful of the township tax dollars and do things in a way where we're paying attention to what our costs are. And to that extent, we authorized a new committee tonight, which will be adopted at our next meeting on a financial um, advisory committee to review in um, very careful order from members of the community to which you're all invited to apply um, our finances. And I would say about both these committees that we're adopting tonight as well, that we want more community engagement and that's going to depend on the people in this room to tell your friends and neighbors and to many of you who have been critics to step forward and become part of the solution. And that's what we're trying to do. Thank you. Next. Jay Nellie, Tim Labu Drive. Mr. Collins, I think the point of contention, I can't speak for uh, Kim, but um, it seems like with the information that was disclosed now that she's become a more interested party, uh, it seemed the town didn't, I don't know how you phrase it, uh, want to file pre-petition testimony and the town didn't uh, push for an expert witness. So while you're saying the town's been fighting, we've been fighting, we've been fighting, the reality is it doesn't look like we were ready to fight that hard at all and actually we were going to settle at year end. So I think the frustration with the committee and you specifically, Mr. Collins, is that there wasn't better body language or communication about that. I think the public would have loved to have known, uh, especially if it was public record, you could have said, well, then you could check the public record, that you know what, we're not going to even ask for an expert witness and we're not even going to ask the file testimony. 
So I just want to say that's the frustration. Uh, oh, I'd say. Is Can I pause yeah, the timer? No, just go, you know what, go ahead. Make okay. it, I'll make my comments. Um, yeah. Mr. Patelli, thank you for your statement. No one's doubting you didn't sustain significant damage. I'm just curious, if you sustained $80,000 of damage and you had a very just cause in suing the town, why would you even settle for such a smaller amount? To be a good citizen, I would have had to I mean, hire an attorney and I would have had to file a lawsuit against the town. So I chose to accept the settlement that was offered. And it's that simple. I stand by my statement. You think the attorney would have been that much, that expensive to make up the difference? 40 grand? The money this committee spends. No? Okay, okay. Fine. Um, I, there, there seem, you know, there's a common theme, respectfully, I'm going to say with you, and it's conflict of interest. If you're suing the town for damage at your home, which I'm sure you sustained, um, and, but you bill with from your own firm that did the cleanup. Here's the pictures, Jay, if you want to come up. Uh, no, I'm not, doubting, I'm not doubting whether it's eighty dollars or $100,000, but you're suing for damages at your home, but using a firm you have an interest in. Don't you think that looks bad? Not at all, because no. I can do it at cost, okay? So when my, my, my men are working, I'm paying their salary. If I had to bring an outside company in, it would have been two times as expensive, and that was clear. Okay, but you have to understand that looks bad, whether it's the insurance company or anyone else. I don't think it looks bad at all. Thank okay. You for your comment. Well, I'll tell you what looks bad. When you bought a development interest in the Beer Street property uh, in your same company or related company, uh, which then had a conflict of interest, you had to sell it over because then it got involved in the COA properties, and which, which gummed up the whole COA situation. That was a conflict of interest that created some issues. And Mike, would you answer for me, please? Sure, I mean, I, I, on the COA issue, the committee was asking me to respond now, I'll respond now, and I guess we'll stop the clock, but I, I think you're well aware and the public's well aware that the committee men did um, invoke a recusal on the COA issue out of an abundance of caution, um, and the legal filings were reflective of the fact that he was, there, there was no actual conflict, but out of an abundance of caution, um, a, a recusal was invoked uh, when when this issue arose. But he did acquire the company, the property, in the development interest before, right before this happened. Uh, before it was going to. I'm be not going to sit here and speculate okay. on well, specifics, but I can tell that you that happened. there was a lot of noise, and the town was, was actually going to be sued because of that uh, within that process. Also, um, you claim that you didn't know the check was going to be approved that night, but it, you filed it shortly before to be in the agenda. And actually, the Monmouth County prosecutor found you completely disingenuous with that. But most importantly, when there was an investigation into the, I just finished the sentence, when there was an investigation into the administrator, and there was a call to spend more money on the lawyer to investigate a claims of problems and wrongdoing, including the payment of this check, you, you voted, again, a conflict of interest, you voted against that spend expenditure of money for the lawyer. So here again, there was a conflict of interest. So, you seem to be like a walking conflict of interest. Your time is up. Thank you. Thanks. I don't think you're fit to be on this committee Thank anymore you. because of that. Thank you. I think we should. Mayor, if I could respond to the points about the New Jersey National Gas litigation. Um, the court filings speak for themselves. Um, if any concerned party wants to go look at the court filings, they're more than entitled to do so. Uh, you can critique my body language as you see fit, but I'm representing my client's interests, which are which is the township committee. And as a member of the public, you're certainly entitled to read that as you may. But uh, the direction that myself or any special counsel representing the township follows is the direction that's provided by the township. I just think it's disingenuous for you to say we're fighting when we really were. You can't. You can't speak from the. Uh, from the Joe Hammer, 8 Cinnamon Court. Um, first off, I just came from the National Honor Society at uh, school. Great ceremony. And I think there's a lot of times when you guys sit up there and, and you kind of have to be put into the public spot. And I know Tom very well. I worked with him on the board when he was the mayor. And I can just say he's an honorable person. And some of these innuendos that get saved when he's trying to save the township money, when some damages happen to his house, and then he acts, you know, through no fault of his own, just kind of, there's a lot of things that get, I know as a, as a board member, sometimes you forget to recuse yourself and there's a ton of things in, the, in an agenda. And it's his first, you know, third time on the, on the uh, town council meeting or whatever. So my thing is, we gotta stop the infighting with this town. There's so much fighting and there's not enough focus on what really matters, like the fire department or like fighting the gas company. 
all these ethics charges and this shooting at each other, we've got to stop this and come together and start doing stuff and accomplishing stuff for this town. Okay, so that's my first request. The second question I have is, what is going on with the land swap? I mean, we were talking about trying to get some a rec center that is badly needed. We have a football team uh, for the HFA who's been <coughs> pushed from various different areas to village school, off of SAT school because we're doing instruction. And we really need to find a home for them. We have a great football season, a great feeder um, program for HFA, but right now they have no place that they're playing. And I'd like to see a rec center, if we could, that's right across from the high school. That could be a great place for all kids to leave the high school and come right into it. And I think that's something I'd like to see happen for this town. And I'd like to know what the town member, township council members think about that. Are you done, John? Yeah. Okay. So um, in, in when we did the due diligence for um, potentially using the land across from the high school you referred to, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it is green acres, we cannot build a permanent structure there. So uh, that's not an option for uh, the township. Um, do you want me to confirm? I can confirm. We cannot build any recreational buildings on that site um, because of green acres. There is the potential to build a field, but it cannot be a building. And what I can say is that I had a conversation um, late last week with the county administrator specifically regarding this topic. She was speaking with her commissioners and she was going to call me back um, to see their appetite in, in moving forward with any type of land swap or agreement to that would enable us to put a field there. So I'm waiting to hear back from the county. Field would be great. One of the areas we're, we're focused on is really trying to improve that intersection. Um, it's been an issue with traffic and backup congestion um, coming in and out of school hours. So we're, we're trying to see if we can obtain some of the land over there um, minimally to get that um, potentially rectified in the, in, the, uh, in the coming future. Thank you for your comments. Anybody else in the public? Yes. Uh, Ed Caranti, 13 Hayward Hills Drive. I'm here as a first-hand witness to the devastating damage and destruction of Tom Cotelli's property and his home from Hurricane Irene. I live on Hayward Hills Drive, three doors up the hill from Tom. As the destruction unfolded, I helped Tom try to salvage many personal belongings, furniture, pretty much anything we could, as the excess water, mud, debris, and things I couldn't even describe as a name overran the gully that was constructed to divert all of this and was obviously not maintained or capable of doing so. His backyard was not recognizable. His pool was filled with mud, wood, debris, and the water just overran his entire backyard into his house. You can't imagine the devastation and the destruction unless you saw it. We did the best we could to save whatever we could, but it was just overwhelming to us as it happened so fast and powerfully. For anyone in this room to question any amount of money that was given to Tom to try to repair the damage that he incurred is downright crazy. And the amount he settled for was far less than the damage he incurred as a result of the negligence and improper maintenance that the town is responsible for. But the fact that Tom used his own company to minimize costs and expedite repairs, quite frankly, should be commended and not criticized or questioned. Anyone in this room that would have been put in that same situation would have done exactly the same thing except some of you probably would have had bills much higher for the town to deal with. I think we heard one example of that. The fact that this is coming up now, obviously, has ulterior motives of a political nature, and that's disgraceful. You should all be ashamed of yourself. Deerfield Road. Uh, just two topics I wanted to address uh, with respect to Mr. Critelli. Definitely have had differences. I'm not up here to vouch for anything, but I do take 
all of you issue by issue, not a whole person by a whole person or your party line. Um, and in hearing the last speaker and Mr. Hammer and uh, these comments that using your own people, I work in a law firm, many of us work in firms. When the people of the firm have a legal issue, we use our own people. I don't understand why that's, that's like common sense. <laughs> common sense, it's not something that's being done wrong. Um, additionally, as far as the is it an ethical violation or not? I've said up here before, if you have, you feel there's an ethical violation, no matter the dollar amount, I said this to Mr. Piscucci, like, of course, investigate it. It is, you know, what it is. Um, but in sitting up here just in the last few years, I wasn't here when this all happened. I uh, wasn't that involved. But we had um, Mike Nicholas on the committee, and votes came up regarding first aid, and he voted on them. And nobody stood up and said, you know, hey, it's an ethical violation. At the end of the day, like you're saying, there was harmless error. The number of votes were there anyway. And, um, you know, in his case, obviously, first aid is good for the neighborhood, so nobody's complaining about that. Was it a technical violation um, or rookie mistake? Probably. I read opinions from the state that they give to committee people, and there are opinions with respect to volunteers on first aid and fire if they are on the township committee that they're not to vote on things for those. You know, so, yeah, and I think you have to put all this into perspective. I'm surprised it was unanimous vote here to move forward this on. I'm not sure what outcome you're expecting by um, going that direction. So uh, my second point is with respect to the three minute rule, I was really upset and I'm sorry I was yelling out from the back out of turn, but when Ms. Casola was speaking, I mean that's somebody from our community whose livelihood is being affected. We've heard her here before. We've had a line of people here before to speak on her behalf and if she needs another minute or two, like I think we should give that to one another. And so I think anyone up here could make a motion on a case-by-case -case basis to extend that time period when warranted. Thank you. Thank you. It would, I think um, for those that, that, that were here at the last meeting, um, we don't just take public comments here. Um, the administrator has an open door policy where she's available and our emails are also posted online um, to communicate anything, to have conversations with us. With the administrator, if you want to talk to one person and that can funnel information to us, what, what we've incorporated, and it actually she does a great job of, it, is communicating back out to Township Committee. So we get weekly updates on anything that transpires. So we may all, not all be at Town Hall during the week to know everything that's going on. So she provides us updates. So she'll provide updates on New Jersey natural gas or fire or anything else going on. So please don't think that this is the only your only avenue. If you don't if you're not unable to come to a meeting and still want to get information to us, please reach out to the administrator. She will take your information and she will share it with the rest of the township committee and we'll have that and then we can reach out to you if we have any specific questions or you can follow up with us. So we, we're trying to keep the policy because we know that not everybody can be at the meetings all the time to see everything. That's one of the reasons why we cast the ordinance tonight to live stream our meetings and also to store them on our websites because we want the public to be able to see what's going on, be able to participate. Hence, why we uh, we ad we added those two new advisory boards tonight. We're trying to get more people in the community involved. So um, please feel free to reach out. Mr. Sure you want to say anything? I have those names. That was I just the, okay. tomorrow okay. night. Thank you. <laughs> Tomorrow night at 5 p.m., um, right here in this room, there'll be the promotion to Sergeant of John Martin, um, the swearing in of Patrolman Daryl Jackson and his new uh, canine partner, we discussed this, Murph, um, the swearing in of two new officers, John Ruain and Thomas Wilson. Uh, we also will be providing a special award to the intern from the police department, Travis White, who has been with us for several months and, and was just a delight to have. And finally, we will be recognizing officers of the year for the, I believe, 2017, 18, and 19. Thank you. What time? What time? 5 p.m. right here in this room. And I do, to, to reiterate the mayor, feel free to email me, call me, or set up an appointment to meet me if there's any issues. Thank you. Any questions from the public? Come on. Joe. Joe, Joe, come on up here. Joe Crowley, 15 Ely Road. Um, 
I'm, I'm, I don't know enough about the situation at hand that was discussed with uh, Committee Member Critelli. The explanation certainly seems to make sense. Um, I don't know if an ethics investigation is warranted or not.